So we're on lesson 15-4. Just like always, we did these top ones in class. So we're going to go straight to our um, independent practice. So this one's going to be a little different today because we're using protractors, but I can't show protractor on my iPad. So we'll just have to see our answers and then make sure they match, whether they're acute, right, or obtuse. Well, this very first one, we notice is bigger than a right angle. Oops, that's not what I wanted. We notice this very first one is bigger than a right angle, so we know it's going to be obtuse. And how big is it? Well, it needs to be bigger than 90, and when we use a protractor, it's 125 degrees. Now, for number eight, we see it's smaller than that right angle, because it's only taking up that much space. So we know it's an acute if it's smaller than a right angle. And we use our protract measure, that is 10 degrees. Now heading on to number nine, we know that this is smaller than a right angle. It looks really close, but if we took a piece of paper, we're going to see that there's this much space that we need for it to be a right angle. So again, if it's smaller than a right angle, it is acute, and we use our protractor, we see it's 85 degrees. Our next one, number 10, is much bigger than that right angle bigger than a corner of a piece of paper, so it is obtuse. And how big is it? Well, it's 145 degrees. Heading on to number 90, not number 90, heading on to number 11, it's 90 degrees because it's a right angle. Number 12, we see that's smaller than 90 degrees. Remember, that corner of the piece of paper is 90 and it's smaller than that, so that is an acute and its degree measure is 40. Again, if you have a number that's close to this, that is okay, because sometimes we don't get our accurate readings with our protractors when we do it. Here, it's bigger than a right angle, bigger than a corner of a piece of paper, so that means it is obtuse, and it is 105 degrees. Now, our last one for checking is number 14. This is an acute because it's smaller, and it is 20 degrees. Now, our next one is we have to use a protractor to draw an angle for each measure. This one is obtuse, so that means it should be bigger than a hundred, or bigger than 90 degrees. So something that looks along the lines like this. It should look very similar to this one up here because they're almost the same degree measure. 180 is easy because that is just a straight line, so we actually don't even need a protractor for that one. And how we show that angle degree measure is we just draw a half circle from one line to the next. 65, well that is an acute, so it needs to be smaller than 90 degrees. So it should be about, uh, maybe a little bit bigger, because that looks like 45. If we have our pattern blocks, the green triangles were 60 degrees, those equilaterals. So that's going to look like about this. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, because I do know it's hard to get it perfect on that protractor. 25 degrees should look similar to this one, because it is only 5 degrees more. All right, heading on to our next page. Measure all the angles created at the intersection of Main Street and Pleasant Street. Explain how you measured. Well, we have one angle, two angle, three angle, four angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to label these angle A, angle B, angle C, and angle D. So angle A is 45 degrees. Angle C is also 45 degrees. Angle B, using that protractor, is 135 degrees. And angle D is, um, is also 135 degrees. Now tomorrow we're going to see this little cute little trick on how we could figure out angle B and angle D and angle C as long as we know what angle A was. But that'll be tomorrow's lesson. So how did we find this? Because it says explain. So what I'm going to have is I put my protractor along each street, 
the acute angle. So remember, that smaller angle was the smaller or lesser number. measured by the protractor. And the bigger angle, or the larger angle, was the obtuse angle. Now what's nice about this is if you notice while you're measuring with your protractor, you would actually notice that you didn't have to measure each of these angles separately. This is a straight line, and your protractor would have measured this one, and without even moving it, it would measure that angle as well. So if you're paying attention and you're thinking, you actually didn't have to change your protractor at all. Now, number 20, it says use the protractor to find the measure of the angle, then use one of the angles raised to draw a right angle. Find the measure of the angle that is not a right angle. Well, this whole entire thing is 140 degrees and so I did that first part find the measure of the angle so now my sixth part next part says then use one of the angles rays so remember ray has an endpoint goes on forever has an endpoint goes on forever so I'm using one of those to draw a right angle a right angle needs to go straight up to make that corner so there's my right angle now find the measure of the angle that is not a right angle well, I have two ways to do this. First is I can use my protractor to measure this angle because that's my one that's not the right angle. But what I also do is I know I have 140 degrees total. That's what I started with, remember? And I can now subtract or take away my right angle, take away that 90 degrees. And what am I left with? I'm left with 50 degrees for my angle that is not the right angle. Now, for number 21. So they each share half a pie, and we have four people. So we have four people sharing, but we have half a pie. So what do we have here? Well, we have it being broken up into one, two, three, and four. We know that a pie is 360. So half of a pie would be what? Half of a pie would be 180. And now we have that 180, and we need to break it up into four pieces. So we have 180 divided by 4 equals what? It's going to equal 45. Oops. So was she correct? Our answer is no. So she still isn't correct. And how do we get that? Well, we know half of a pi measures how much? Measures at 180 degrees. And then what do we know based on that? We know 180 divided by 4 equals what? 45 degrees and not 25 degrees. What we could also do for this one is from our lesson two days ago, we know a circle is 180 degrees, or I'm sorry, is 360. And notice what we do. If we break it up into its full piece, we have eighths. And from two days ago, we know that an eighth of a pi is also 45 degrees. An eighth of a circle is 45. So even though I'm only looking at half of it right here, if I was thinking of the whole pie, it's still one eighth of that whole pie. So I could also use that thinking from a couple days ago. Now heading to number 22, we have Janet made five three-point shots in her first game and three in her second game. She also made four two-point shots in each game. How many total points did Janet score in the two games? Well, here, I'm going to make a number, or not a number line, a tape diagram. And I'm going to label it first game. And then I have a second game. So what do we have? We have Janet made five three-pointers. So this is my three-pointers. If she made five of them, that would be one, two, three, four, and five. So she made five three-pointers. So one, two, three, four, five. And then it says she made three three-pointers in her second game. So one, two, three. Three three-pointers. Now what did she do? She also scored four two-pointers in each. So that would be one, two, three. 
and she also scored four two-pointers in her other game. So that's what my model would look like. So now what do I have? Well, we have 15, because 5 times 3 is 15, plus 8. 4 times 2 is 8. Down here, we have 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 2 is 8. So we have 9 plus 8. We have to combine all of those together. So this is going to be 23. This is 17. Then when I add them up, she scored 40 points over two games. Not bad. Number 23 says, Maya designed two intersecting roads. She drew the roads so that one of the angles at the intersection was 35 degrees. What are the three other angle measurements formed by the intersection? So we have two roads, and they obviously crossed because they have to form an intersection. So what do we have? We have one angle, which is the smaller one, is 35 degrees. So now what do we know? We have to figure out what our other angles are. So we're going to say, what is angle A? What is angle B? And what is angle C? We're looking for all of those. Well, we know a straight line is how many degrees? We know a straight line is 180. And we're taking away this piece right here. We're taking away 35. So what do we have? Well, we have, oops, not regrouping there. We have 145. So angle A is 145, because that's our straight line here. Notice also, we have a straight line right here. So if this angle was 45 degrees, then we know this one down here is 45 degrees, because we have, again, 180 from this red straight line, and we're taking away this chunk, 35, which again gives us 145. Now we're left with our last one, which is angle B. What is angle B? Well, angle B, we'll notice with this green line, is also a straight line. And we need to subtract my 45. We need to get rid of that to see what we have left with. When we subtract it, we're left with 35 degrees. So what are the three angle measurements? 145 degrees, 145 degrees, and 35 degrees. All right, we're on our last one, number 24. Roberto walks from school to the corner store. He then walks diagonally across to the square park to go home. Which of the measures of the angle formed by Roberto's path? Which is the measure of the angle formed by Roberto's path and the edge of the park? Well, we're at Roberto's path. So where does he start? He walks from school to the corner store. And then he walks home. So there's his path. So we're looking for this angle measurement right here. I notice we have a corner store, which is also funny because that makes a corner angle or a right angle. And then we're splitting it in half. So what is half of 90? Well, half of 90 is 45. What we could also do is use our protractor to measure, and we would get 45 as well.